tonight we're talking to Jim Rutakowski uh, from Probate List. Is that what, tell me how what the exact name of your services is? Well, uh, for reference, Phyllis, and uh, thanks for inviting me to this venue. Glad to uh, reconvene. It's been a while. The website is probatechatter.com. So that's oh, probate, C-H-A-T-T-E-R.com, which I deign to uh, not only uh, have a page on there if your members go to uh, the drop-down for services and then probate leads, but they could also glean some other helpful info in there in terms of how to get their message out to executors, administrators, and uh, so I kind of deign to make that more of a blog informational type site. Uh-huh. Um, so it, and, is it, because when I, you've been sending me the list and it is so comprehensive, there's so much on here that I'm like, I'm not even sure where to start. Um, so want to give me an idea about what about why probate and, you know, what your list does and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, in the way of a brief introduction, I uh, utilize the services of independent court researchers that go out uh, in a handful of markets. Uh, most important to your listeners is uh, L.A., Orange, Riverside, San Bernardino counties, and they're able to extract a list of all of the probate petitions that are being initiated at the courthouse. So armed with that information, uh, investors and real estate agents can make a connection with those families that are going uh, through the probate process. And um, the decision maker, the go-to person, if you will, is the personal representative, also known uh, more popularly as the executor administrator, and they're the ones that yield the most influence in the probate process. That is, the court has appointed them to wind down the earthly affairs of their loved ones. And so uh, you know, when somebody passes and uh, either they don't have a will or an ironclad living trust uh, or if something is contested, uh, then it ends up in the probate court. And probate simply is the court-supervised process of winding down their affairs, uh, itemizing, collecting the estate's assets, uh, making sure that taxes and uh, bills are paid and the remaining proceeds go to the heirs, the beneficiaries that are legally entitled to them, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So... I'm looking through your list that you sent me, and I'm looking at all these people. That, I mean, the amount of information is mind-boggling. So if I want to send a, a letter, I send it to the, the executor. Is that what I do? Yeah, there's a column in there which would, uh, among other things, uh, list the name of the personal representative. Oh, and that's so it's the, the, uh, the go-to person. They're the ones you send it to? the personal representative. Right. Uh, not to get bogged down in legal, de terms, uh, legal terms, uh, they're either called the executor or administrator, depending if there's a will, no will. Uh, there's other names, but uh, there's a column in there for personal representative, and that's the one to approach and uh, kind of offer your help to liquidate the real estate portion of the estate. Uh, you would uh, also, in the list, uh, be able to see the names, addresses of the heirs, um, yeah. and it's kind of a function of um, you know how many marketing dollars you have. Um, some right. people elect to not only contact the personal representative, but also the uh, the other beneficiaries. Um, and it's good to bring everybody up to speed and have everybody on a on the same page and facilitate communication, Phyllis. But uh, the person that is the ultimately the decision maker is the personal representative, um, and uh -huh. there would be a column in there which would delineate whether they have full authority or yeah, limited authority. That. We can get get to that later, but um, I understand, Phyllis, that uh, you take an altogether different approach with the list, and you've. Uh, reached out to some of the attorneys um, that are in the mix. I had done that, yes. 
Um, but I did not follow up enough. And then, and this is everything is in the follow up. I just didn't. I should have. Um, I told some of my students uh, that what they should do is basically go visit the attorneys because it has or email that has so much information about them. Um, that was. Um, you know, really, and one of them actually did it and now has attorneys calling him. And he was going, like I said, every month and, you know, trying to get past the gatekeeper. And he finally did. It's just like anything. It's, a, it, you know, you've just got to do it. It's a, uh, it's a matter of just following up and doing it. So I'm looking at your list again here. It says the petitioner. Who is the petitioner? What, what are they? Well, they're the they're the, uh, the ones, with, and normally it's nine times, ninety nine out of one hundred times, it's a, it's a close blood relative, uh-huh. uh, whether it's a spouse, son, daughter, um, and then incidentally, the list would contain uh, their relationship to the deceased, and, yeah. and normally administrator, executor, it, administrator, it's somebody part so, of the uh, the nuclear family, and they're the ones that um, either have been named in a will or. Um, if there's no will present, um, I mean, for all practical purposes, it's uh, it's a very close family member, and uh, they're looking then to liquidate the estate's assets. Uh, so the petitioner's relationship, huh? So I'm looking at this, and there's the beneficiary, the beneficiary. Okay, um, so it's. That's the one I should send to is is that one right the the petitioner basically petitioner correct yeah yeah that's because what I'm doing. they're the okay. ones that are going to um, have the fiduciary duty to uh-huh. uh, liquidate the estate's assets they're uh-huh. the decision makers and uh, you know a lot of people uh, think that probate may be an arcane process and uh, it's really not all that different from a traditional sale. I mean, uh, there are a few hoops, more hoops to jump through in the event that that petitioner, as indicated on the list, has uh, limited authority, which essentially means that the court is going to take a little pause, and uh, if they're going to sell real estate, um, it's, that whole process is going to be a little bit more scrutinized by the court. And... Um, whether they're granted full limited authority uh, will depend on the complexity of this, the estate. Uh, maybe it's a large estate. Maybe there's some uh, risk that the petitioner could abscond with the estate assets. Um, so um, in that event, if they have limited authority, then I'm sure maybe some of your listeners have been uh, familiar or at least heard of the overbid process and what that is basically is that if they have limited authority then uh, the court will appoint a referee that determines the value of the property, the assessed value of the property and um, the real estate must sell for at least 90% of that assessed value not below it but yeah, that's a problem, and I, I, also, I did that once before, and I won't do it again, because it's like an auction. You show up, and I don't care what, whether you have a contract. I did it with the realtor. I had a contract, but it was limited authority, so there was a, a court date, and I showed up, and uh, somebody overbid me. It was, so, yeah, they could sweep in at the 11th time. hour and uh, just sweep the rug yeah. from underneath you. So, you yeah. know, you could uh, clearly... Uh, isolate those people that have the full authority yeah. where the judge says basically have at it and they could enter into um, a listing contract or basically do uh, whatever they want. They could sell it to an investor uh, for below market value, uh, which is very commonplace because tragically a lot of estate homes suffer from deferred maintenance because a late homeowner was ill or they couldn't maintain it properly. So my favorite. What to get from? <laughs> yeah, what to get from forty thousand feet is that um, you know somebody with full authority can uh, basically uh, it's not right. unbridled discretion. They could uh, basically uh, just just have at it in terms of liquidating the estate uh, with the caveat that. You know, uh, any heirs, beneficiaries, other people that, uh, other stakeholders that stand to inherit uh, the proceeds 
uh, would have to be notified. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, due process, and uh, clearly some beneficiaries um, that uh, balk at the proposed sale can uh, can raise their hand and uh, tie it up a little bit. But um, if they have full authority, uh, that those are the people that you want to go after. Unless you're an investor that uh, wants to come in and be one of those people at the 11th hour to buy a uh, property on a cheap and overbid. But, um, right. Yeah, but they, you know, the way the situation is, especially in L.A., is there's a uh, the the buy and buying and selling um you know supply demand is so out of whack we don't have anywhere near of homes and i mean if you are lucky to find something you can sell it in a heartbeat and over asking price you get multiple offers that's what it is so there's no way i would tell people like to even bother to go unless you lived in buffalo new york and you went in the middle of the winter and no one else is going to show up because it's a snowstorm uh you know I, I, not in la it's right. just a waste of time yeah, well, i have and another question lies the entire value is um you know these yeah. these properties are kind of under the radar or shadow inventory if you will you know they're unpublished right and unknown and that's the biggest feedback that i've gotten is finding inventory and uh much less getting yeah. a bargain uh bottom barrel deal um right. and so with an aging boomer population you know we see this uh as they age and um you know death is is not cyclical um people die in every every season every real estate market mm-hmm. and that only stands to rise but um you know these properties are uh, not yet widely disseminated, and so that's the whole value to working a list like this, Phyllis. Is mm-hmm. you can get in front of those families and um, establish yourself as as the go-to expert when it comes to the type of these transactions. And uh, you know the overarching message is that uh, you could help bring the estate closer to final settlement. That you're an expert in these type of deals, and you can. Uh, really alleviate the stress and uh, get get the probated property off their backs and uh, give them one less thing to worry about and the 99 other things that uh, they're doing uh, in their role as the executor administrator. Mm-hmm. Um, do, do you have somewhere on your site uh, a copy of a type letter that you might send out? Um, no, if if they want to uh, fill out a contact form, I do have some templates uh-huh. that okay, so uh, they con- some PDFs they can contact that I could you certainly forward. And say I'm interested in, and and then you can send them. Yeah, okay. So that's what they do if they want a, some kind of a letter. Okay. Um, the how long after the pro they come the probate starts would you suggest they you send them uh, you know the letter. Well, I would say the more the merrier. I mean, uh, repetition clearly is a uh, key uh, determinant of success in any marketing uh, campaign, even more so with probate, simply because everybody has varying time frames mm-hmm. to sell. Um, you know, some some people, they want to sell yesterday. Uh, right. In other cases... Maybe the bills start piling up, and they want, and uh, if it's a if it's a living spouse, uh, they start filling that feeling that uh, void of lost income. And a few months down the road, they want to get closer to the kids. Um, in some cases, uh, the probate process, uh, you know, it's quite candidly not an overnight process. Sometimes it has to play out, and it could take upwards to a year in some cases, depending on the size and complexity of the estate and so uh to cite another example uh let's say the probate process plays out and then the property reverts back to the heirs the son's daughters and all of a sudden they have an itch to sell um in other cases uh maybe they want to sell but um like i uh, alluded to earlier uh, they have 99 other things to do in terms of contacting uh, you know, life insurance companies, banks, and, uh, you know, myriad other tasks uh, that they have on their plate as the executor administrator. And so, uh, you know, the timing uh, really is it's all across the board. So uh, the one thing that we could say for certainty is that 
uh, when they want to sell, and they want to sell very quickly. And so it's it's uh, very critical, I think, to um, constantly, you know, be in their face and uh, you know make an er- make an early introduction. And so uh, whenever the timing is is right, uh, clearly, you know, you would have the best chance by. Uh, and they're more likely to work with somebody that was there from from square one right out the gate. Um, what about I see your phone numbers? Do you suggest calling them or sending out the letter and then calling? Well, that's the million dollar question. How to approach these people? I would say about thirty percent of the time you have a phone number of the executor administrator. Um, Many of them, you know, most of them are good. You know, the feedback that I've gotten, I mean, some of them are bad. That's just one of the consequences of living in a free society. People change phone numbers. Uh-huh. Uh, so as for the other 70% uh, where a phone number is not contained in the record, I know that there's skip tracing, reverse phone searches, and uh, all manner of other third-party services where you're able to uh-huh. share it out, that phone number. So, uh, yeah, some people are... Uh, intent on getting the conversation rolling on the phone that's what i would recommend but uh if you're going to get them on the phone i might you know uh, and there's a couple of schools of thought but you know my personal thought for what it's worth is that you should mail them something first and so when you call them they know you or at least know of you and so you know maybe a mail piece could grease the skids or give you the license to uh, to follow it up with a phone call. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so uh, I haven't been on your website lately to see, you know, what other information to have. But um, I mean, this is really I've been I've been doing a lot of homework with lists because the, you forget the MLS. You know, that's just a waste. You have to find different ways, and I've been looking at different list services and. Some of them have multiple things, and they include probate, but it's a joke compared to yours. And uh, this is really, you know, excellent. I, it's just amazing uh, because I think I am going to start with the attorneys too. I'm going to do the same thing: send them uh, letters, emails, and phone number, and call them also. Of course, the best thing is in person, but I'm not so sure I have the time to do that. Um, can, anyway, can I say uh, something okay, on that subject of attorneys? Uh, by what? I was going to suggest something in the uh, in the realm of uh, contacting attorneys. Um, mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people would shy away from that, saying, "Oh, you know, attorneys—they already have their network of preferred investors, realtors." And I, uh, I, I always find I always balk at that because you know when I hear that uh, when people um, refuse to contact the attorneys on the presumption that they're already working with somebody. Well, that, that's kind of like saying, well, um, you know, I'm not going to work with any other buyers or sellers because there's a real estate agent on every corner. You know, it's all about competition. And, and yeah, sure, there's attorneys that have a preferred group of realtors, but that that it's not an exclusive club. It's not impenetrable. Um, you know, well, it's it competition takes more time. like everything else. Yeah, it takes more time. It does, but um, clearly they're a reservoir of referral-based business, even if you don't get the deal at hand, even if uh, they already have somebody, uh, have, have a, a, real, a real estate agent or investor that has an imprint on a particular deal at hand, um, clearly if you can get in good graces with the attorneys, then they're going to have other situations cross their desk where they need to call upon a real estate professional that can add value but right. um, there's a couple strategies I might suggest one is um, offer to take a picture of the property um, it's a low maintenance decision on the part of the attorney uh, so you're not asking to buy or list a home you're just saying uh, you know mr. Smith Esquire um, I understand that your client has a probated property at 123 Main Street uh, clearly um, I'm, the, your client uh, doesn't want to get bogged down in any code violation issues or other uh, issues related to deferred maintenance. So with your permission, can I go by 123 Main Street, 
to ascertain the condition of the property, take some photos, and uh, share them with you. And that's good. That's very good. I think the, also the fact is that um, you're offering cash and some of these other people may not be. Uh, and with a realtor, these things take time. I mean, I can close quickly, you know, almost immediately. And I, I also tell people, you've got to, just because they have a deal with somebody doesn't mean it's going to close. Uh, people fall out of escrow all the time. You've got to, uh, until it absolutely closes escrow, you're, you're you know, you, you've got to still follow up. Well, you know, and that's a fantastic point uh, for the investors uh, since they're bringing all cash to the table. Um, California is one of the very few uh, places. I think uh, only California, Hawaii, uh, are the states where the attorney is compensated uh, to the extent of uh, what the estate gets for its assets. So there's a built-in oh. conflict of interest. And so, of course, the attorney <laughs> is going to want to hang on for the best offer, whereas an investor uh, can come in and, uh, the attorney may not like the deal, but these families uh, need liquidity. They need immediate cash, uh, not only because the heirs have their hands out and they're looking for a payday, you know, and that's that's one point is uh, normally the, the heirs don't want the house. They want the cash in the house. But also there's an immediate need to pay for bills, utilities, taxes. I mm-hmm. mean, just about mm-hmm. every single expense that an ongoing household has to pay on a regular basis must also mm-hmm. be paid in a probated estate. So, mm-hmm. Could uh, be a mortgage payment, th- too. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we find yeah. that um, a lot of them um, are free and clear, which we want, but um, clearly there's, I mean, there's many cases where they have a suffocating mortgage payment. So um, uh, what I'm trying to say is that there's a sense of urgency, uh, an immediate need for cash. And so, you know, you could bypass the attorney altogether and and remind these people that uh, there is a built-in conflict of interest, that the attorney is looking for the uh, most amount of money so that he could essentially make a commission and um, tell them that, you know, if there is a uh, immediate need for li- liquidity, then you could certainly solve that with an all-cash offer and close escrow in as little as you know ten days, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great, yeah. Listen, these attorneys won't be paid either. They're not getting paid till the deal closes, too. So they want, uh, you know, usually attorneys want to get their money quick. They're always uh, looking for a quick payday. Yeah. And, uh, not to begrudge anybody for for making money, but um, you know, just to keep that verbiage in mind that uh, the attorney may not necessarily have uh, the best interests of the estate in mind. You oh. know, if, if they need to cash out. <laughs> right. Uh, when do they? I'm sure. You know, uh, I was married to an attorney. Half my family's attorneys. I know how they think. <laughs> Give me. Well, show me the money. <laughs> oh. Well, you're made from the same cloth, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right, right, right. So that's how you get to them. Because I had this well, little, speaking of terms, letter you know, I sent what, out. What's another other... term for attorneys? You know, they, they've been equated a lot of times with ambulance chasers, right? And 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 that uh, yeah. leads into Deal my breaker. next point, uh, yeah. which is, you know, if you're going to contact these families, uh, it's not ambulance chasing. I mean, that's the biggest reservation that I've found is um, you know people don't want to feel like they're a vulture sweeping in to profit from someone else's loss or misery. And uh-huh. I think nothing is farther from the truth because these families have a genuine need to liquidate the estate's assets and uh, get on with their lives and move on to build better memories. Mm-hmm. And okay. so um, I, I definitely think yeah. that uh, any investors, agents out there that are kind of teetering on the edge saying, well, you know, should I throw my hat in the probate arena or not, um, you know, you really should uh, resolve the moral quandary and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not an ambulance chaser. I'm actually doing a service for these families, and they need mm-hmm. me, and they need to mm-hmm. sell the properties to 
settle their obligations and uh, distribute it to uh, the heirs and, and, and get on with life. Mm-hmm. That sounds good. Okay, so let's go. Uh, let's. I want to repeat your uh, access information so that they, you know, uh, can get to you. Um, you would prefer them to um, email you, refer to them, go to the website. What would you like them to do? Well, you can get some backdrop uh, at probatechatter.com, probatechatter.com. They're welcome mm-hmm. to call me, uh, 607-953-0548. Uh, there is a contact form on the probatechatter.com. My email, incidentally, uh, my direct email is jim at jimrukowski.com. So that's jim at j-i-m-r-u-t-k-o-w-s-k-i.com. Uh, not to get too convoluted, if they go there, they, uh, jimrukowski.com, they could see some sample probate assistance mm-hmm. websites that I've put together because inevitably the question is, um, as you alluded to earlier, Phyllis, uh, now that you have the list, what do you do with it? And that's where I'm also able, as a value-added service, to build a website which is tailored entirely to those executors, administrators, legal teams, oh, fiduciaries. So you, on your letter, you would put you know, your, uh, this new website up so they can go and, and look up you and establish credibility. That's a very good point. Yeah, for more information, call me or go to probatesalesgroup.com or SoCalProbateExpert.com, life sites. Uh, okay. The whole idea is, you know, clearly a lot of those people that would otherwise not warm immediately to a total stranger over the phone mm-hmm. might otherwise go to a website dedicated to mm-hmm. probate where right. you can kind of hold their hand, uh, educate them on their options and the probate process and Mm-hmm. convince them um, that you can help them settle the estate in the most efficient and uh, mm-hmm. dignifying manner. Uh-huh. Okay. That sounds good.